Hey, this is Mrs. Warren, and I'm going to introduce to you a couple major types of people that were in the South during Reconstruction. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go through the instructions for the activity. If you would like to continue listening, I'm going to go ahead and also read the Scalawags and Carpetbaggers reading to you if you need some assistance. First, you're going to read about Scalawags and carpetbaggers. This first one is about carpetbaggers. Now there are um, and these two people or these two groups of people were irritants in the south. So here you're going to read about carpetbaggers and on this page you'll read about scalawags. Now both of them uh, were hated in the south and uh, we have a few political cartoons of them I want you to look at, look at them closely. Um, some discussion questions. There's another political cartoon of what a carpet bagger was portrayed as. Another one, carpet baggers. And once you read, you'll understand what these mean. Now, you're going to have to complete an activity called, well, carpet baggers and scalawags. And these are sensory figures. So on the outsides, I want you to draw lines and give me. Uh, something that he might be seeing as a scalawag, uh, what he might be hearing as a scalawag, or saying, feeling, doing, or conveying any thoughts or feelings or experiences. And this you can get from your reading. On the bottom, of course, this is a carpet bagger. You can see by his bag, and it's the same thing. Here are the directions over here, and that will be due uh, when you finish. If you want to come back with me and read the, uh, the reading that goes along with it. I'll be happy or you can stop it now. Scalawags and Carpetbaggers. The term carpetbagger refers to someone who arrives in a new region with only a suitcase or carpet bag of possessions. Their goal was to profit from a situation that causes others trouble. Now, after 1865, a number of northerners moved south to purchase land, lease plantations, or partner with down-and-out planters in the hopes of making money from cotton. At first, they were welcomed. As southerners saw the need for northern capital and investment to get the devastated region back on its feet, they later became an object of hate, as many southerners saw them as newcomers seeking to get rich off of their misfortune. It came... It became the term to refer to a Yankee who moved to the South and usually meant a darn Yankee and not to be trusted, a scoundrel. In reality, most Reconstruction era carpetbaggers were well educated members of the middle class. They worked as teachers, merchants, journalists, and other types of businessmen, or at the Freedmen's Bureau, an organization created by Congress to provide aid for newly liberated African Americans. Many were former Union soldiers. In addition to economic motives, a good number of carpetbaggers saw themselves as reformers and wanted to shape the post-war South in the image of the North, which they considered to be a more advanced society. Though some carpetbaggers undoubtedly lived up to their reputation as corrupt, many were motivated by genuine desire for reform and concern for the civil and political rights of freed African Americans. At this point, if you would like to go to your sensory figure and use that knowledge, you can pause this video. All right, let's move to the second one. That was carpetbaggers. This is about scalawags. White Southern Republicans, known as their enemies, known to their enemies as scalawags, made up the biggest group of delegates to the radical Reconstruction era legislatures. Some scalawags were established planters, mostly in the Deep South, who thought that whites should recognize African American civil and political rights, while still retaining control of political and economic life. The majority of scalawags were non-slaveholding small farmers, as well as merchants, artisans, and other professionals who had remained loyal to the Union during the Civil War. Many lived in northern states of the region and a number had either served in the Union Army or had been imprisoned for Union sympathies. Though they differed in their views on race, these men wanted to keep the hated rebels from regaining power in the post-war South. 
They also wanted to develop the region's economy and ensure the survival of its debt-ridden small farms. The term scalawag was originally used as far back as the 1840s to describe a farm animal of little value. It later came to refer to a worthless person. For opponents of Reconstruction, scalawags were even lower on the scale of humanity than carpetbaggers, as they were viewed as traitors to the South. Scalawags had diverse backgrounds and motives, but all of them shared the belief that they could achieve greater advancement in the Republican South than they could by opposing Reconstruction. Taken together, scalawags made up roughly 20% of the white electorate and wielded a considerable influence. Many also had political experience from the war, either as members of Congress or as judges or local officials. Okay. So you can go back down to your sensory figure. Uh, that concludes this lesson. If you need help, please ask.